let's get to uh, the uh, Thursday night football game. Are you back? Are you back in? Ah, I, was, <laughs> uh, but I, don't, I know what you mean. I, 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 they pull uh, them out. I, 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 I rediscovered football last night, too. <laughs> pull them out. Wow, wow. No, no. Uh, uh, listen, um, Thursday night football. I, I don't know what it is with the Jets taking on the Texans. Last year, they they whooped up on them 30-3. to three, um, And this year, the Jets hadn't won since the week three Thursday night football. And, and again, just to refresh everybody's memory, last night was week nine Thursday night football. <laughs> right. That was the last time they won, was week three against the New England Patriots, and all Jet fans were going gaga because they're 2-1 and one after three weeks, and the last time the Jets were 2-1 and one after three weeks was 2015, and then they went back to the Stone Age. And they didn't win a single damn football game until last night. And at halftime, it sure looked like they weren't going to win this football game because I, I remember again in, in London when we uh, pre-broadcast of the Jets and Vikings – um, what turned out to be the second um, loss in a row for the Jets in what turned out to be a five-game losing streak. Um, we were just kind of kicking the tires on on where's Malachi Corley, the uh, rookie receiver that the Jets chose in the third round and everyone was very high on and look out for this guy and he didn't do a damn thing and he was, you know, healthy scratching and all that sort of business and, and, and the general sense you got is that um, he wasn't ready yet. He was a little too raw. And uh, last night kind of showed it. On an end around, he runs to the end zone, and the Jets go up 7-0, and whoop, he let go of the football before he got in the end zone. How did guys which is, do this? Uh, it, which is like a college move. You see that in college, right? Yeah. Or, or Deshaun Jackson right. way back in his early days, fresh out of Cal. Yeah. And so uh, Halloween night, a treat for the Jets becomes a trick on the spot. And we're still scoreless. And um, and that's the way things were looking. Because the Texans didn't come out looking very very good themselves. The Jets' defense showed up last night. We'll talk about that a little bit when we talk about the Texans in short order. But I don't know what happened at halftime. I don't know what the uh, interim head coach, Jeff Ulbricht, told this team. Or what Todd Downing was chatting with Aaron Rodgers. Or whatever happened. But uh, there were some Wheaties being served, figurative Wheaties being served, and uh, the Jets' first three possessions of the uh, of the half, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Actually, the four Jets' second half possessions were touchdown, 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 victory formation. That was it. The Jets' offense held on to the ball. They put drives together, and then Aaron Rodgers threw three touchdown passes, and one of them quite literally and figuratively leaps out at you. Mm-hmm. And um, Devontae Adams is the one that puts it in the end zone to seal it. As 8 and 17 turn back the clock just when the Jets needed it. By instead of settling for a field goal and allowing the Texans to potentially put together a game tying drive, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams called ball game on a touchdown grab that looked like it was Lambeau Field, quite frankly. And Aaron Rodgers coming into the halftime locker room with 69 total yards. Nice. Left the game with now 69 career touchdown connections with Devontae Adams. Even nicer. There you have it. 224 yards in the second half total for the Jets. Aaron Rodgers in the second half of last night's game, 179 yards passing. Just 32 in the first half. Which, by the way, was the fewest in the first half and tied for the fewest in any half in his career. So just when it looked very dark, things dawned, and Garrett Wilson to the rescue. Now again, I like retelling stories here. I don't know if you're aware of that, but I don't know if there's ever a new audience. And things that I keep mentioning um, are, are, are remarkably relevant, I'd like to say. In this regard, in London... When I sat down with Aaron Rodgers and the rest of the crew before the Vikings and the Jets, we were talking about the wide receiver room. 
And we were talking about how things weren't all on the same page and how Rodgers last year, it would have been much better to have had all of the kinks worked out last year in, in, a, in a very uh, distant way, similar to what's talked about with Anthony Richardson right now. Injury cut short. All of the let's get your feet wet, let's get working through all the kinks so year two you can hit the ground running type of reps. And last year didn't have it. And how some of the guys in the uh, receiver room needed to know about getting open at the right time and needed to know about running your routes at the right spot and needed to know about being patient or when to push it or where he's going to throw it if he needs to throw it in a certain spot at a certain time. He's going to throw the guy open. He's going to throw the guy back shoulder. That these things need to be worked out. And that's when I asked if 17 could help, referring to Devontae Adams. And at the time, Malachi Corley was wearing 17, and Rogers says, you mean Malachi Corley? <laughs> no, I mean Devontae Adams. <laughs> and how Adams could potentially not only – be the voice in the room to tell this is where you should be, that's where you should be, stay confident, keep your chin up. Another guy in that room who's going to the Hall of Fame at the position of some of those guys in the wide receiver room, that would be helpful. And um, it was apparent that that was part of the reason why Rodgers is pushing for 17. Also, uh, you know, when the game's on the line, you just say, this is what we're going to do on third down. You just get open at the line of scrimmage. I'll throw it to you. You just run in the end zone untouched, a flag football touchdown to put the game out of reach. That's one thing. But Garrett Wilson also being a guy who can make plays if given the opportunity and maybe more opportunities with Devontae Adams being there. And I don't know, man, because he is on a nice little heater, Garrett Wilson, and I understand the Jets haven't won in a while, but he's got 90 receiving yards or more in four of his last five. And last night, a receiving touchdown on a opening drive of the second half where the Jets had to get something positive. His fans were starting to chance sell the team hmm. in the first half of that game. And then a touchdown that if the Jets can actually start putting wins together, if the Jets can actually start stringing them together, we will be talking about this catch as the moment. Because it's being mentioned in the same vein as Odell Beckham Jr.'s one-handed grab on a Monday night, I think. Or it says, no, it was a Sunday night against his Cowboys, the famed one-handed grab. Yep. Because... In a loss. In a game they lost. Third and 19. Right. Third and 19. After a holding penalty, knocks him back, and maybe the Jets are going to have to settle for a field goal here to tie the game that the Texans are just taking the lead in. Rodgers throws it to the end zone, and Wilson reaches up with his right hand, brings it in, and turns around. And as he's going down to the ground, it sure looked like his shin was down, ruled incomplete after further review, touchdown. OMG. <laughs> Rick Dalton Schiff, right there. That's why they drafted him. That's why he was the offensive rookie of the year two years ago. Man, look at that picture. That's why you draft him. You That's how that, special he is. You know what that looks like, right? Of course. We Dalton. we actually have the uh the side by side. It does in fact look like the jump man. If you reverse the Jordan Jump Man logo, as a matter of fact, <laughs> it looks exactly the same. It's, it's just crazy. one ball is oblong and the another one is round. His it's, arm one is, guy is going is, is, backwards as he's jumping. The other guy's obviously going forwards to jam it. And obvi you know, sorry, Adidas. I know. That's the last it's thing. Too bad he's an Adidas he's, guy. He's an Adidas guy. It's the yeah. last thing Adidas wants their, <laughs> I know. But his, their, uh, their guy a, to be a, a bringing to mind. He's wearing a Nike jersey, though. So, I mean, yeah. what are they going to do? Sick. Am I, am I weird? Like, as, as incredible as that was, I've watched this about... 20 times i'm still not sure he was in oh, but, but listen but he's, you know what he Give didn't get him. both feet in but if a, sh a shin is is like a wrist it's like a it's a knee it's like two feet yep. and he did get the shin in he got the shin down before the knee hit though yes i've watched it over and over and over again and as a matter of fact jeff albrick was telling 
the officials doesn't matter if you see it TJ's way <laughs> based on the actual physical feet. You mean most of America's way? I mean, I was talking to the ref when they were reviewing it. I'm like, just for the sake of posterity, you have to, you have to say that's in just so it, it, uh, it goes down in history. It's, I mean, it would rival the Odell catch, you know? It's, uh, it was amazing. And Ulbrick has just, you know, got to be bouncing off the walls because the Jets came up with a win. And you heard Albert Breer on Wednesday saying everybody's on pins and needles in that building and so on and so forth. And um, it's not a fun place to work. Ulbrich was talking about how the team was hearing uh, externally how uh, the criticism, and it was warranted from even this spot over here. Five five losses in a row with a team as talented as the one that they have is just not, as they would say, acceptable. But the defense came up with eight sacks. Garrett mm-hmm. Wilson comes up with two touchdowns. Avanti Adams comes up with one touchdown. The, de- the offense that Aaron Rodgers said should score 30 every night scores 21 in the second half. And uh, could have had 28 if if their receiver actually didn't just, perp- you know, mistakenly fumble, pardon me, um, by before he went in the end zone, uh, they, they would have done it. And Rodgers presented Ulbrich with a game ball afterwards. I got to have a nice moment with him. Um, Jeff's been uh, really steady, and it's been a few weeks in the making, but... Uh, you know, I told him after that Tate touchdown, that was for you, buddy, because uh, we love him, care about him. We appreciate uh, the energy he brings to it, his approach, just the kind of man he is, and good to get that first one. So a team that I was talking about um, in one of their many nationally televised games during their losing streak against the Bills, I said the Bills looked like a sum of their parts, and the Jets looked like a team – full of parts, looking for a sum or something, came up with their best team performance last night and are bonding together as a team. Again, the defense was all over C.J. Stroud. They couldn't stop Joe Mixon, but they they stopped everything else while the Texans come in all banged up at wide receiver. And then uh, Rodgers and the offense gelled together in a half that – Ended the losing streak. They 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 played a team game and are bonding together as a team around their interim head coach. The only question is, what next for a team that's never made the playoffs after starting three and six as they now are? And next up for the Jets is a visit to Arizona. And then another nationally televised game. That is a, let's make sure I get this correct. That is the Jets against the Colts on um, on a uh, Monday night? Sunday night on NBC against Joe Flacco, former Jet quarterback Joe Flacco. Then a bye and then some winnable games, one would think. Because Miami's equal, you know, trying to dig out of that hole this weekend in western New York. Can they pull it off? They kind of have to make a run. If you lose one game to get yourself to seven losses, you're really playing with fire. If you lose two of them, I don't think you make it. But the bottom line is you're saying there's still a chance. They're still alive. They've Hmm. taken six shots. (laughs) And they're still alive. Last night could have been a night where it ended. But it didn't. And they're feeling good about themselves. They pull me back in. And yes... Garrett Wilson, just put that photograph up one more time because it tr- it's catch of the year, right? I mean, give me another one. Ooh, give me another yeah. one for a touchdown for a team that needed it to put them up in the lead yeah, it's the to get the crowd the to get the crowd off the off off the hook. Yep. I mean, you just see him up in the air grabbing the football. Amazing. Just an unbelievable catch out of him. And side-by-side side with Odell. There it is. Unreal. Yeah. I mean, just so, when the Jets needed it. The reverence that these players, this generation of receivers, have for Odell was amazing because after the game, they was asking Garrett about comparing the two, and he basically was just like, no, Odell is that boy. Like, that is the catch. He wasn't, wouldn't even think about putting his 
in the same category. He said he was being humble about it. Well, he needs to be unhumble (laughs) and recognize what he did last night. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.